The US threatens Australia over China. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm still working through my morning shine of coffee on this very cold <laughs> Brisbane morning. It's good today, it's only 12 degrees, not 9 like I've been putting up with for the last few days. I thought we'd have a look at this article, which is certainly doing the rounds from news.com.au. It's about everyone's favourite state, Victoria, being Australia's Achilles heel with our relationship to the United States, and the US a threatening Australia over this relationship between Victoria and China. So let's, before we have a look at this, let's jump to one of my favorite websites, the Observatory of Economic Complexity. And at the moment, they have the capability for you to log in to the pro account, which I didn't know about, a viewer left it in the comment, thank you very much, and get access to slightly more up-to-date data, which gives us you know, and some new tools, new reports. So it's quite good. One thing I like is it shows everything here on one page with regards to, or side by side, our imports and our exports. You can see here, this is our export industry. You know, coal, 57 billion. Gas, 17 billion. Iron ore, 48 billion. And then our biggest destinations, number one, is China at 87.9 billion, then Japan at 26 point, sorry, 27.6. You've got the United States here sitting at 3.9% or 9.71 billion. Australia does a lot of exporting to China, not so much to the United States. You know, they're, they come after China, Japan, South Korea, India, and then the United States. So they are ranking in the top six. But the US is also a source of a lot of our investment into Australia. And, well, we have our military and political alliances with their civilization. Which is concerning though that they're threatening us over this relationship with China, but just shows you how in some ways we're gonna be stuck in the middle of any global disputes or trade wars. And here's our imports. 24% comes from China. The most recent imports of what to Australia, our biggest ones is refined petroleum, refined petroleum, cars, crude petroleum, Delivery trucks, broadcast equipment. The most common import partners are China at 52.7, and then the United States at 22.8, then Japan, Germany, and Thailand. So we're importing a lot from a lot from the United States, where we're actually exporting more to China than we're importing, because we're exporting 88 billion. Where the U.S. we've got definitely. Now we're only exporting 9 billion and we're importing over 22 billion. So you can see the differences that the differences between Australia or China and the US. And let's have a look at the USA and just to see, oh wait. So here we can see the United States and we can have a look at just the scale of their economy. I mean, really is no equivalent to Australia. But let's have a look at their exports. And we can see their biggest export destinations is Mexico, Canada, China, Japan, and South Korea. Now, Australia, we're at 1.54%. Okay, so we're a tenth of Mexico. A tenth of Mexico. And let's look at their imports. Their biggest imports partners is China at 499 billion, then Mexico, Canada, Japan, and Germany. And Australia, you can't even see our name here. We're at 0.4%, guys. We're at 0. Point, we're like a rounding number from the China era, <laughs> China imports. We're 9.71 billion. China is 499 billion. So that just shows you where we sit with regards to both civilizations with imports and exports. Tourism, education, there are other factors. But this is, you know, important part of the economy. So let's have a look at this article about the warning Australia received regarding our belt, Victoria's Belt and Road deal. And here's the question. I thought federation meant that the government, the federal government was responsible for foreign relations. How can states be making these deals with foreign civilizations? Can someone explain that to me in the comments? So US Sec Secretary of State 
Mike Pompeo, has warned that Victoria's Belt and Road Agreement with China could see the US simply disconnect from Australia if it impacts telecommunications. Victoria is in the final stage of finalising the controversial agreement with China despite the federal government saying it is not in Australia's best interest. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton on Thursday described China's initiative as a propaganda exercise. Victoria needs to com explain why it is really the only state in the country that has entered into, into this agreement, Mr Dutton told 2GB. Today, Mr Pompeo has warned that the agreement increased the Chinese communist regime's ability to do harm. While he also said, while he said he did not know of Victoria's agreement, he warned it could impact the US's Five Eyes partnership with Australia. We will not take any risks to our telecommunications infrastructure, any risks to the national security elements of which we need to do our five uh, to do with our Five Eyes partners, he said. I don't know the nature of those projects precisely to the extent they have an adverse impact on our ability to protect telecommunications from our private citizens or security networks for our defense and intelligence communities. We simply disconnect. We will simply separate. Well, here's another thing. We don't even need to worry about China or this agreement. We've got, you know, Australian border forces who are able to access any data of any time you cross the border. And that can infringe upon agreements you have with your users if you're a business provider. That technically in means that you will if infringe the privacy legislation you've got in place if you're a European business. So, yes, we're already already doing spectacularly with our own data, <laughs> data privacy. We're going to preserve trust in networks. We hope our friends and allies, especially our Five Eye partners of Australia, does the same. Victoria's agreement will fast track China's involvement in infrastructure projects in the state. But some are fearful it will lead to political interference in Australia as China flexes its, its muscle as a rising power in the world. Now, as Australia is a first world, apparently, nation, a G20 nation, why are we going to China for their involvement in infrastructure projects? Can someone explain to me why that's necessary? Why we're going to funnel funnel money over to China for these projects? One way or another, that's what will happen. Why are we exposing our nation to such risks? Why are we becoming so dependent on them in another aspect? There's a, an ideological divide between the political system here and the political system over there. And I know you've got a lot of China files that just love China and want, you know, wish Australia would would become a, a socialist communist utopia but i think there are a lot of people that don't in recent v weeks victoria's treasurer tim pallas has already criticized the morrison government over its push for an international pandemic inquiry saying it vilified beijing the victorian state government led by premier daniel andrews has also been avoiding questions about whether any of its 24 billion rescue package could be funded by a loan from China. Federal Deputy Labour Leader Richard Marlis told Sky News, the Andrews government should be transparent about where it is borrowing its money from. China has faced accusations that its Belt and Road Initiative is a debt trap strategy that leaves poorer countries with, that, with loans they can't pay. While the agreements have facilitated cheap infrastructure loans from China, when poorer economies default, China has made land grabs in places such as Tajikistan and Sri Lanka. Australia has expressed concerns about the initiative, along with Japan, India, US and Western countries in Europe. Oh, I can't see Daniel Andrews just jumping into that. Jumping into that. China expert Tom Miller told the BBC, parts of the initiative could be described as a giant bribe in which China promises investment in exchange for political concessions. Can you see the Labour Party in Victoria offering political concessions? I certainly can. And well, there's definitely been precedent. Normally it's in Aldi bags, isn't it? He also raised the prospect of poor countries like Laos being stripped of their natural resources in exchange for $7 billion in railway, railway investment, for example. I mean, this is the same old trick, guys. Most civilizations have done this. It's 
just how it happens. I was just kind of hoping Australia wouldn't be as colonial, <laughs> as much a colony of the world as, well, all signs are pointing towards. Sales China Institute Director Yuki Kobayashi told news.com.au in 2017 that the initiative was part and parcel of China to assert, trying to assert itself as a rising power. She said the focus on economics was also part of China trying to present itself in a palatable way to others. It's presented as a win-win initiative with fuzzy Confucian ideals so that it's not perceived as threatening for their border regions. China has touted the project as a way of connecting and developing some of the most diverse countries in the world, providing economic opportunities to left-behind regions. However, Dr. Kobayashi has res said response from the countries has been mixed, depending on how much they needed the investment. Not being perceived as a threat is something the Chinese are very conscious about, so they're really trying to package it that way, saying we're investing in infrastructure, giving you the financing and help with construction. It's hard to say no to that, she said. Why is Victoria interested in that? Why is Victoria interested in that? Shouldn't we have the capability to fund infrastructure in our own civilization? So the US has apparently walked it back. So this was written recently. Well, I think an hour before or after the other article was published. The US ambassador to Australia has hosed down a warning from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, or Pompeo that Victoria's Belt and Road Agreement with China could see the US simply disconnect from Australia if it impacts telecommunications. Following Pompeo's co comments, the US ambassador Arthur Culliver House stressed his nation is confident its ally down under will protect the security of its telecommunications network or those of its intelligence partners. We have made no secret of our concerns about 5G and we commend Australia for its leadership on the issue, he said. We are not aware that Victoria has engaged in any concrete projects under BRI, let alone the projects impinging on telecommunications networks, which we understand are a federal matter. If there were telecommunications initiatives that we thought put the integrity of our networks at risk, of course, we would have to take a closer look at that, as the Secretary suggested. We have every confidence that Australia, as a close ally and 5 Eye partner, would take every measure necessary to ensure the security of its telecommunications network, as it had report repeatedly done in the past. And Victoria is in the final stages of finalising the agreement with China, and the article continues. Now, so it looks like there's a move to downplay it, but really, the biggest concern is why in the first place is Victoria getting into bed with the communist Chinese government? Why does it feel like that's a necessity to fund infrastructure projects here in Australia? Because that's going to, regardless of what you think, that's going to be investment and potential profits shipped offshore. But then again, a lot of our big construction companies already are owned, owned by the Chinese. So guys, let me know your take on this. Are you worried? Do you think this will damage Australia-US relations? Or do you think Australia is just going to be stuck in the middle of any impending trade war? We're just really a little, you know, a cork floating on the waves of international events. Maybe Australia needs to start taking well, a make Australia great again approach. How would you suggest we do that? As always, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you'd like to support the station, there's a few ways you can. You can support us via YouTube or Patreon. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, buy Heiser Says Merch, or support us via PayPal. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.